Hey everybody, it's Kaneki. I come in the name of the Lord. I hope I hope you're having a good day. So this talk is just going to be Abba Adonai, the teacher, the Holy Spirit. It's just going to have a talk with your Holy Spirit within to readjust the constituents of the covenant that we're under so that you yourself can have a sense of peace to know that it's okay. And what I wanted to discuss on this talk is the concept of self-love, loving yourself, okay? We all know that there is a concept that is out there. If you don't know how to love yourself, you can't, how can you expect to love someone else? As true as that had maintained itself when it was said and then believed, in the time that we have now, it is capable to revamp and materialize in a bigger way than you can understand why that rule was there. With this self-love concept, we all know that people would say, you can't love yourself, you can't focus only on yourself, that's selfish, you're egotistical, arrogant, self-centered, and a lot of times when people would uh, go on that concept of loving yourself, they would falter and find themselves haughty, prided, arrogant, yeah? They misconceptualized it, but in the time, it was because it wasn't that time to misconceptualize it because they weren't mature enough to understand the reasoning why there was a rule on that. The word love comes from the Sanskrit word loba. And loba means greed. Love at its fundamental base means greed. We serve, we have in us the God of love. Does that mean it's the God of greed? How can greed and love be in the same sentence? That doesn't make any sense, right? Understand that this covenant of love to 1,000 generations held true to that point where that self-love will turn to an arrogant, haughty spirit. But within that covenant, there was another testament. And that testament is what your life, what my life, is registered on. That testament is the founding block and with that founding block the words don't change the meaning of the words they change they need to be adjusted just like everything else was adjusted you cannot expect to read the same thing in the new life with the old conceptualization of what it meant and looking at that bigger picture you understand now that love, meaning greed, has also changed. Love was full. That was God. It was pure. It was its wholeness. Like I said, the truth remains. God shattered to a million pieces. Love broke to a million pieces. Which means the definition, the concept, the very root, the etymology, the beginning word of love also changed its definition it wasn't definite now it is able to reinvigorate a definition and the love that used to be greed has now also turned into a portion of greed and that is what you call a greed a greed so love that we have justified for ourselves here in the New Testament of the Old Covenant that changed everything and made everything bigger so that we could house a bigger Holy Spirit so that power could be realized, which is of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. It's about power, you know? It is now agreed. And then you can just self-justify that into the new mind and the new way that you love, you love your life, yeah. And that is knowing that to be selfish in your love, loving yourself, doing things for yourself, it's not about you loving yourself so that you have love to give. You already have love, 
Love never fails, and love is very patient. If love is not growing in you, that means that you have stopped yourselves. It will only grow in step, right? And there's certain rules and laws that you can adhere to when it comes to love, but at the same time, understand that with love, you should ne never awake or arouse it until it so desires. And while you're waiting for the love to be desiring of you, you are making yourself desirable. You're making yourself something that it wants. You're making yourself something that it adores. You're making yourself something that is kind. You're making yourself something that is graceful. You're making yourself something that is more than what you are now, but not exactly pure. Because love is a small piece. It's agreed. So you want to have kindness. That is what matches in peace. It's ratioed. And that is of the Holy Spirit. It's all about parts, right? And you have to adjust accordingly that part. So it's not about you learning how to love so you can give love. It's about you learning how to be kind to yourself so you can learn how to be kind to others. It's about you learning how to be patient with yourself so that you can be patient with others. It's about you learning how to be knowledgeable about yourself so you can be knowledgeable about others. And it's about you learning how to let go of your own beliefs of comfortability so that you can let go of the world. Self-love and self-justification is not egotistical. It's not there to tempt you into becoming arrogant and haughty. Because at this point, the basic civilities of the laws, the law of righteousness and the law of righteous, the law of faithful and the law of faithfulness, it should bring about a, a matured sense of how just to live. Very simple, right? Now that you got that down, that's not the end. Now you can refine those things. And you cannot refine it by ignoring yourself. It's a self-reflection. And with that self-reflection, it doesn't come with the need to be uh, validated of yourself. You're not validating yourself because you know that you're not valid yet. We're never going to be as valid as we want to be. But in that process, you stop wanting to be valid and you just let it, right? In this process, it's not about validating yourself. It's about knowing more than just the surface of the word and becoming the word. You become patience. You know what patience is. What is your version of patience? It's going to be different than someone else's version of patience. What is your version of thankfulness? It's going to be different than someone else's version of thankfulness. Right? And in that sense, use that as your parameters. Because if you're just thankful, you're just full of thanks. It's not wise to be too extreme. That is what you call righteous. It's the extreme. It's the pure of it. And it's doesn't work it will not work with who you are now where the development of the Holy Spirit and your entire self spirit soul self mind heart everything justified at this time where it is in its enhancement it will not work at that full capacity it's not meant for the full capacity there's always supposed to be room to grow because that's what generates the everlasting life yeah so it's all about the right between right between <laughs> yeah and that's what the balance that little path you're not thankful you're not thankless you have thankfulness a little bit more than the average but with the knowledge and wisdom to remain in a homeostatic realized zeal energy of it yeah at this point of the holy spirit developing in you in us in this generation at this time how everything has occurred 
we can work backwards. And because we are the age of omniscience, which means that we have information at our fingertips. Yeah? Think about it. We are the age of omniscience. That's why it's so much easier for piecing things together as well, right? You can work backwards, and then you realize what is this entirety of the spectrums of light because God is light this is this concept right if God is an all-consuming fire right that means that there has to be a radiance and that radiance is that soft glow that the cons all-consuming fire gives but how can an all-consuming fire have a radiance if it consumes its own radiance and that is if the radiance has been self substanced or salvationed, right, into a its enemy, pretty much. Something that would douse out fire, which would be water, right? But if an all consuming radiance or fire and that radiance hits a water, it's a love for the enemy and it changes completely the entire structuring. And that's why Jesus Christ, who is the radiance of God, the all-consuming fire, who is one and the same, needs to go between. Because what the next step of the Holy Spirit, which is you and I, is called the zeal of the Holy Spirit. And the zeal is the very energy, the very energy and maintenance of that energy during this time of growth in order to keep it going and keeping up the legacy that has been started since the beginning and as at this appointed time right now for you in your own time <laughs> even this information coming out is perfectly in accord to that it is going to establish the biggest balance that has come to past in the development of it in the now because that is going to be the final step that will usher us in to a higher dimensional phase, a transcendent nature of righteous nature, and you will have been justified correctly so you can actually live in that nature. Yeah, you won't be a fish out of water. You have the correct systems in place. Yeah. And so, in that sense, it's about now going deeper into yourself. And that is going to be the self-love. Lova, love. It's Sanskrit for greed. Love broke to a billion pieces. The definition also went to pieces. And now it's just a greed, which is you agreed. You are agreed to love yourself enough to be kind to yourself love goes through all of the fruits of the spirit that you have this these characteristics <clears throat> that are not of this world but can be learned because you have the capacity and the blessing and the salvation and the you have the capability you were made for that to have it be realized and then accorded maturely so that in the end you understand it you shouldn't have been stealing at that point thou shalt not steal right and if you have lived accordingly and then you justified then transcended to this new nature you'll understand that you've hit the point of maturity almost to that pure right and when the zeal and the radiance and the all consuming fire all come together in one one point that all the parts then are fully realized and they disappear to become completely new that is when the morning star is going to rise in your hearts and for the first time will understand what it means that we are blind why we why do they say that your light is a darkness and if that darkness in you is a light how great is that darkness 
It's not that we don't know darkness. We have never, ever known what pure white is. You don't know what pure white is. White is the closest thing that we can associate with purity. And that is not a color, just like black is not a color. Right? But we know what pitch black is. How can there even be a darker blackness that's possible? It is, because once you get to the darkest blackness, that's it. Like, there cannot be a bigger blackness. But white, we can only go to a certain spectrum. Anything beyond that is out of the grace of the Almighty. And pure white, think about it. You don't, we don't know what pure white is. So that's why, right? You're going to become this pure white. And if you have not the correct associations of percepts matched up with your inner percept, which is your spirit connecting to your soul, justified, anchored, correctly thought, your thinking has remembered, reminded, and then renewed so that you no longer have to think or try. It's been fulfilled. It doesn't stop growing. It's just been fulfilled at that mature level just to start in a completely new life. You are a new being. In that sense, you will then become the son of God, the sons of God, the sons of the first fruits, and the son of man, the sign of the son of man, will appear. Just like how it's said. That is for us to know that the establishment of how you self-regulated and self-loved, so for that self-awareness, in the correct humilities, which should be, which is already, like I said, everyone is good at their heart. If you have believed in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that, oh wait, <laughs> well you just believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved because it's your heart that you believe and are justified, yeah? And I know that that part is down. The next is what I call the faithfulness. You need to have that justified capacity of faith and that is in your mind, like, how we have to say it. so you have to keep minding right once you reach that fulfillment you don't mind anymore <laughs> and then it enhances the fact that the times and the places to do the things that you thought <laughs> was against the law you have matured enough to now handle it you now have the keys to the Batmobile with all of its gadgets and all of its gizmos. And before, it was a law and a rule to never ever touch it. <laughs> That's what happens because then you're given the true power of what hate is. You're given the true power of what uh, um, reprimanding is you're given the true power of what judgment is how to be a judge you're given the true power to be justified in the truth and that truth will then have the faith in you to know that you will be accorded correctly and in that accordance that is the reward and the blessing for the power you have become enhanced and once that happens you'll never be put to shame Nobody can call you a hypocrite because you have this understanding that they have not been able to think of. Why? Because you have something that is not of this world. You have the correct light. You have the white. The white that is more brilliant and bigger and bolder and more graceful than anything that we can know here and consider pure. Anything that is pure on earth is already decrepitly stupid. It's not pure. We don't know what pure is. And that is exactly why you being the zeal, the zeal of the Holy Spirit, the energy capacitor, the one who is able to go into a pure love and a pure gentleness. We already know now what pure grace does. Yeah? Once you're in pure grace, everything around you that has any type of discrimination, anything around you that has any type of animosity, don't, and they don't have the correct 
capacity of heart and mind justified so that they can look upon the truth and not be cut to smithereens. It will just happen to them because grace is that powerful. Humility is something is something huge. There's something bigger that happens as you could keep adding more humility. It cinches, it makes itself alive. In, it's You don't need humility anymore because it self-governs its own self. It's like you had enough humility that grew the root of your what you have based your faith on and your capacity to be justified. It grew, you added enough fertile soil and more fertilizer each time that grew the root so deep it pierced into the belly of the earth, into the belly of yourself, past the perimeters, and speared the darkness right inside of you and brought to that darkness the very root of the light of life. What can it do? The light of life feeds off that darkness. That's why the darkness is so far away from it. It is in fear. Do you understand? Fear is pure. And if a pure justification, a pure truth, which is called the sincerity of yourself, gets into the purity of that darkness, which is of God from the original creation, it was the surface, the very surface of the deep. This deep is something that holds a lot of power i even read in it also says i've learned something else about the deep that it would be mistaken that the deep had white hair white hair what why would they say that they were talking about the leviathan and they mentioned the deep in there this deep it has white hair the surface of the deep was of darkness yeah can you imagine now what had happened that whatever was is in that deep is this huge pure creature <laughs> thing that fits inside of you and that is what the devil is afraid of that is what the darkness is afraid of and when that root gets to that purity of the darkness it's like you have now control of your entirety because the darkness will only be converted back to what it originally was, which was of the original heaven where God himself resided and was there in the beginning. And as the end, you're all put together, the revelation for a new Genesis, the beginning and the end will match up. But what comes out of it is not the creation of what we already know. It's the creation of something completely new that's so new. It's no longer above the sun. It's no longer under the sun. You, it, the sun is in you. The morning star actually grows in your heart. Your blood has completely changed everything. The water, the fire, the blood, the sacrifice. Every single part is a complete ecosystems of spiritual growth that the purpose of this whole entire thing that is the realization of it and it's going to be the new reality and so self-love right now is very important and you all have the capacity to do it correctly because you have already been justified with love you guys are justified you are saved with the videos that I make you know it I hold true to my word I'm not part of any group I'm not there's no discrimination in my Holy Spirit and I'm not saying that, oh, if you're part of a group, you have discrimination. No, you have been already set aside. That is your truth. It, there's no discrimination in that. It's how you handle being set aside. Um, because what you'll find is that you haven't been set aside. The bigger picture will always unfold because God is in perfect control and he doesn't lie and he holds to his oaths and he will never ever deceive you. He can't. And so what looks like you being put on the side will be revealed unveiled in its time to realize that you were never on the side yeah it was all in the plan that's why i hold true to what i say because that is what i know i'm not here to make a group i'm here to cast the bread that i have when abba adonai wants to teach these are all new concepts that are coming to me as i talk to you freely yeah I'm, i haven't focused on anything i haven't read something and came up with it You'll see that when that happens, I'll make 
notes and stuff like that, right? And um, whatnot. But when it comes to this free flow stuff, this is for the current now. This is for you personally, me personally too, because I'm listening to what I'm saying and it's, it accords and it helps me as well, you know? And when it comes to the new stuff, then you'll see me break it down like more sciencey, pseudoscience. But even that, that is coming straight from heaven because there's no way, there's no way that I could ever figure that out. How, like, how would I ever know that in this development stage that it's going to be the zeal, the very energy of the Holy Spirit? And since I've said that now, now think about it. It is all about the energy of the Holy Spirit because we already got the, the radiance of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And we already got the forgiveness, the blood sacrifice, the forever mercy of that tent, that canopy, that radiance covering us from the all-consuming fire, which is God, who is love in purity. And in the purity of his love, oh yeah, check that out. That's why he's in a million pieces. Because what he wants to do now, since he sent his son down here, then his son has his spirit in him. When those pieces all come together and then disappear, the glory of God, the full capacity of this white that we don't know about will be realized and you'll be able to live in that glory without the sun, moon, or stars, without the sky as we know it. There's not going to be an ozone layer. You're not going to need to breathe because you're going to be feeding forever off of something that is going to sustain you in every way shape or form and will never leave you it is never going to lie it's not going to be like one day three million eternities from now and say oh now i want to take that back it will only get bigger and that's the thing it's something that transforms and transforms and the transformations are not only physically outward that's going to be just like a um an evolutionary process how you can see with a tadpole but it goes into accordance in the dimensional aspects of your inside and that is what i call manimorphosis we know about the metamorphosis of the butterfly and the metamorphosis of the tadpole and the frog but there's one very huge difference between those two and those two differences are exactly how we can analogate what happens to us in our growth period right the physical outward is like the tadpole they start off completely weird looking yeah in a completely different world and it sustains them but then slowly but surely as they go through this world things happen to them and new things come out and at the end no longer do they even have to live in that world they started but can go outside of it they look completely different it's not only one body with a tail it is a very complex creature creation a completely new creation but that's all external right with a caterpillar yeah what they do is they they look completely different they live on top of a certain plant then all of a sudden they go into a state of cocooning right this chrysalis what they do inside of that chrysalis is completely completely opposite to what happens with the external evolution they turn themselves into a goop a complete plasma plasma mm. protoplasma mm. i'm not sure well i am <laughs> and what happens is they rearrange their dna structure completely yeah and from there you see what comes out complete new creation but it can defy it can defy the very laws of gravity and it can defy the very laws of creation <laughs> pretty much yeah and that's what happens when you are working on your manamorphosis of the inside and what you do is you create a forever space inside of yourself and that's how you grow without it breaking you because it started off small just like you and works in steps and in this step is now coming to understand that power, respecting it, inspecting it, appreciating it, appraising it, uplifting it, ascending it, making it go higher, lifting Jesus higher, understanding that it's okay to do that, understanding that you are completely forgiven. You need to understand that you're a child of God. You are here for a reason. 
that reason is so that you can enhance and continue the legacy that has always been made for you and exactly why you know that you are here you know it's you know <laughs> and so with that take that encouragement yeah what encouragement means is that it's adding to heart I'm adding to the heart I'm letting you know that if you have any yeah I'm adding to the heart so that you can beat bigger and know that it's okay because you are now a bigger person you need a bigger heartbeat I'm adding to any type of fear that might be uh, keeping your heart in an angina state of your spiritual walk and it's you're not allowing it to pump the way that it's supposed to be and I'm encouraging you that it's okay that's the reason why this is coming out right now you are mature enough to handle self-love and not fall into the pitfalls that would have happened and did happen that's why the laws were there in accordance to the growth and structuring of even that type of love at that period for the people for us at that time and you won't fall into egotism and you won't fall into uh, becoming haughty prided arrogant yeah and the only reason you can do that is because we know and understand what humility is at this point in our walk and humility the mother virtue the mother ground yeah it's about obeisance it's about groveling the good servant the amazing servant they go down on one knee in respectability and put others higher always why because if you keep doing that you gain the favor and eventually what you'll have at the end is not you groveling what you'll have is a standing ovation you'll be obeyed by everyone around you and when that happens that's when you get upraised you just added value to yourself you just transcended instead of this balance of right and wrong you went up you lifted Jesus higher and with that you went higher as well because you are in him he is in you and you're going to the father who knows all right and in that sense you are the eye of the pyramid that is connected and that pyramid is not a triangle but you realize is it's a diamond <laughs> and it's not made of bricks like how you know it's made of pure solid white this light that we don't have no purpose we have no purposings to know right now because we're still immature but if you're above it all then you can understand how your two eyes can become one you're not you don't have to look right or left not anymore you find that balance that stillness right in the middle of that balance because you have gone out and you have worked through the discipline endured what will drive your endurance at this time is not faith what will drive you to persevere it's not going to be hope the driving force behind perseverance and endurance is compassion at this time compassion works as that fuselage to help you go forward and maintain that acceleration and it's not going to be acceleration where you're like just step on the gas without realizing the effect of it and then out of control and crash right when you started no it's going to teach you how to be graceful and how to be graced into it it's going to give you the capacities and the limits and be self regulated in your second nature so it's not like you have to think about it it just will come naturally and that's why you got the keys to the Batmobile kind of thing right and so compassion is going to be that fire it's going to be the all-consuming fire with the radiance and in that whole thing it's going to be the energy that will keep you endured and persevere through and so in this sense keep going understand that the race was never a race a journey is not a race 
Yeah. If you start too fast on a journey, you will persecute your injuries. Yeah. You don't sprint a mile. In this sense, you have to understand the journey has been thousands of years. And in the journey of us now, it feels like forever. Things have happened so fast and come quickly and, you know, fulfilled so fast. It seems like you've been through a lot and you have. But the only reason why this whole thing has come about is because we have the capacity and the patience, the knowledge, and the mercy, salvation, and forgiveness, and the love of almighty name of our volumes. And in that sense, inch by inch is how we went. Because by the yard it's hard, but inch by inch everything is a cinch. <laughs> I love that so much. And it's so true, and I've always been it's always helped me, I should say, to get anything that was really big in my life and then chop it down into small little pieces, you know? And in those pieces, if it didn't accord into all equal pieces, I just look for the biggest pieces. Take care of the biggest pieces, which might be only two things out of a seven part section. Taking care of those two things, all the other ones fix themselves. All the small things fix themselves. And then that big, huge problem, you had it under control and it was braced and it was easy to realize it, yeah? And in that sense, you got stronger, you accomplished. And so that's why little by little, it makes a big difference, you know? A spoon with consistency, endurance, perseverance, driven by compassion can take down a mountain and it'll be by you. A small little spoon it works like that and it will have you forever and ever so in that sense learn about it get to know it it's gonna help everything <laughs>